In a little over a decade, the retail landscape has changed beyond all recognition. The shift to online retailing, for instance, the rise of omnichannel, the demise of department stores and growing consumer demand for same-day home deliveries. The impact on retail supply chains has been great, with both retailers and their suppliers under pressure to develop innovative new capabilities. Traditional retailing is certainly challenged. There's no mistaking that. But there's a world of difference between challenged and broken. E-commerce isn't unstoppable, and nor is e-commerce without risk. While traditional retailing isn't necessarily a comfortable place to be right now, neither is e-commerce retail either. Ask any online retailer competing with Amazon. So, where is retail heading and how exactly are retail supply chains changing? Which strategy should retailers and their suppliers and logistic partners adopt in response? And what skills and technologies are coming to the fore as retailers, suppliers and their logistic partners embrace this brave new world? Join me as we discuss the various issues and challenges faced by retailers in both the physical and online worlds, talking to leading experts for insights and industry perspectives. If the future of retailing, physical, online or both is close to your heart, then I believe that this roundtable is essential. Well, I mean, I think if you look back historically, even beyond 10 years, retail started as a single store, as an owner, as a store staff, making all of the decisions about that particular store. Over time, there may have been some growth, but what we've seen in the last 10 years is just explosive growth. Whether it's organic, change growing naturally, acquisitions, mergers, those types of things, there's so much activity in retail that's really changing the landscape. And so customers now have a much bigger assortment of choices than they had in the past. And so what that's putting pressure on with the retailers is to make their retail experience accessible to everybody, but also deeply personal. So how do you blend that capability of delivering whatever a customer wants, wherever they want it, however they want it, but also making it something that feels like it's a unique experience to each individual. And that's really what's changed exceptionally in the last 10 years, or even more so in the last couple of years. Well, of course, it depends on the industry, on the type of the industry. If you think about fashion industry, uh, you might have a, a strong impact of individualization of very short um, supply chains with a quick lead time, uh, high flexibility. But I would say the overall um, change is still the the e-business, the, the e-commerce um, that has been, I mean, it is in the media for a long time, but um, it has not still been implemented by all the, all the retailers and some are a little bit behind that. And I would say Corona pandemic has shown which of the retailers have implemented in a good way and which are behind. The last decade has just been so fast and it's been the year of online, the decade of online and the decade of mobile and the decade of increasing larger smartphones, bigger smartphones, the decade of social media, of, of interconnected consumers, the speed of fast fashion and the global reach between 2010 and 2021 is, is simply astounding. So it's been a decade of online, decade of mobile. So in terms of the change, the supply chain has had to be faster, getting more customers, more product than ever before. The other change has been we've become omni-channel retailers now. Omni-channel means reaching every consumer through every platform. Um, Post-COVID, it's actually delivery has changed. Delivery is now going to local small stores and that's been another incredible change. The biggest change is, is absolutely the move online. Um, you know, beyond any sort of question that the, most of our larger customers had fairly basic capabilities in the early 2000s. Uh, some of our bigger customers weren't really online until about 2008. Um, so actually a lot, of, a lot of big UK retail have probably been around for about 12 years. Uh, you put that into context, ASOS has been around since the year 2000. So actually, 
the transition for some of the retailers was slower than some of the pure plays. So I think that that's been the biggest change and therefore that impact on your supply chain is immense. You know, you've gone from a retail environment where you're servicing a number of stores, uh, transport capability to those stores, optimization of how to fulfill those stores with the needs of, of forecasting what a shopper might need to a situation where it's 24 seven. Um, and, and the um, acceptance of error uh, it is non-existent. And if you would go into a store and your size isn't available, that's disappointing. If you go into a store, if you go into an online store and you order a particular size and particular colour and something else turns up, that's 100% failure. So actually it's driven um, changes in, in accuracy, speed, uh, the ability, the need to innovate. It's driven a lot of change and, and I don't see any sign of it slowing down. We're heading for a really important collaboration, sharing data. We're looking at artificial intelligence, big data. Retailers have been collecting this big data. Social media has been collecting this big data for a long time. Now we need to make it work. Now we need to find the core competence of one company that can take all that big data and another company who's more custom service facing because the need to make the customer experience really important. So core competences between companies is vital. Don't try and do something you're not very good at. Partner up with somebody who has that skill, share data, collaborate, and you both grow. I mean, that's that's the future of retail. I mean, I think it'd be, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention e-commerce, omni-channel, all of those things. I mean, I think that the things that we've seen with COVID and the disruptions of 2020 have really shown us that there are fundamental shifts in human behavior and that retail is trying to figure out how to serve those behaviors. So it's important that the retail of the future understands the customer personas that they're dealing with. Are they looking to serve those individuals who just want to show up and have the items loaded in their vehicle and then leave? Are they looking for those individuals that want retail to be a social experience? And so each retailer needs to have a perception of what's important to them and what are the capabilities they need to build out as part of that. We're also starting to see is that there's an assortment of private label brands and SKU proliferation and, and understanding what products need to be out there and what are those key components of choice and convenience and cost and quality and what are the key drivers of the decision-making process for the individual consumer? So that's going to be especially important in the future. And then we're also gonna see a big increase in automation, I believe. Certainly store labor is a variable cost in many cases. And so we're trying to identify where is the right source and location for that labor. Is it within the, the corporate operations? Is it within the stores themselves? Are there ways that we can take away some of the mundane repetitive tasks and create more meaningful work for individuals? And we're going to see automation really start to increase its use within the retail environment. On one hand, I would say the expectations of the consumers are increasing regarding flexibility, especially. Think about the same day deliveries or even same hour deliveries in large cities. So that is something that we as consumers drive. Um, even if it's not really, if, it, if it's not, um, if it does not make sense all the time, but anyway, it's it's a pressure and companies who are able to deliver in a very short time, they definitely have some advantages. As I said before, um, you know, the, the um, some of the companies are still behind when it comes to e-commerce. We can see that in the, for example, German uh, grocery market, where there were some attempts to, uh, to, to implement e-commerce, but some of the participants had dropped out or canceled their projects. And there are still two companies that do this, but with, um, I would say, limited success. So they do it just because to be in the market, but um, it has not been, well, a wide acceptance. I think that we've got an opportunity from the operational side, and we've seen heavy investments. In the United States, for example, Target has invested extensively, Best Buy, a number of the retail chains for grocery and apparel and home goods. All of them have been looking into how they can create the actual physical execution of delivery of goods to the customer. And so that that's been happening. At the same time, there's the need to understand what those advanced capabilities are that can tell you what the customer is going to want. So advanced analytics, demand sensing, for example, being able to understand what the customer wants right now, as opposed to looking at a historical forecast. 
And then there's also the opportunities to enhance your strategies for promotions, for inventory, for trade spend. It's important that we're understanding the use of analytics as it becomes an indicator of what's happening as opposed to just reacting it within the moment or sticking to a plan that may have been obsolete some time ago. And then lastly, it's the ability to unify supply and demand. So creating transparency into your supply chain so that you can connect the flow of the overall items as opposed to just looking at a single node within a supply chain. It's imperative that we understand how goods are coming in and where they're going. And that really incorporates all of those things that I just mentioned. I guess they should not miss that train, especially when it comes to e-commerce. So what they should do is they should gain knowledge about um, supply chain management on one hand and also on digitization on the other hand. And of course, that means to build up some collaborations with partners to set up some, let's say, um, um, well, pioneer um, technologies. And let me give you one example, um, a medium sized retailer, grocery retailer in, in Germany. They also have a collaboration with the number one retailer, you know which one I mean. So they do this in Berlin, for example, but they now have set up a fully automated store with no um, with no staff at all. And they just tested it and it works. So you, you know Amazon has done this in the US, but they have done it in Germany and they are the first one here to have implemented it. I think this is a, a great idea and a great move just to test it. And I would say those companies will at least have the know-how, how to implement this, how to test it, if does it work or not. Um, so, Combining supply chain management know-how, digitalization know-how should lead to a good uh, strategy overall. Obviously, the, the thing that's accelerated dramatically and, and, and the fact that we're talking to, a, to a, an online call now is a great example of it, that the world has changed beyond all recognition. You know, I can remember when I first started working many, many years ago, we, we had a lady who brought around the mail. She came on a trolley and delivered the mail and I would have stuff put into my inbox and I would possibly get around to looking at it some point that week. And I'd, I'd do a response, somebody in the typing pool would type it, uh, and eventually the customer might get a response two or three weeks later. The reality now is all that's gone. We live on in a digital world where everything's immediate and therefore customers' expectation are for things to be immediate. Supply chains have to therefore be ready to support that. So I think the things that are changing are robotics is becoming far more accessible. Now I'm not talking about Star Wars robots, I'm talking about things that work to support people. You know, we're a very people-driven business. We need to find technology to support people. You know, whether that's you know, robots that help people cleaning, whether it's robots that help people picking or packing, that work within an existing infrastructure so you don't have to have a wholesale strip out of your entire infrastructure. How do you support the capabilities of your own team with things that are more um, sophisticated, can work longer hours, can work 24 hours a day um, and actually support people in a different way. So that's modular robotics from our, in our world. But also there's a big push for data. The simple reality is that the world relies on data flow and therefore linking manufacturers into supply chain right the way through to, to logistics functions and the end user are vital. Well, it's every skill. We have to be multidisciplinary. We are omni-channel retailers and we need to be omni-channel employees now, all of us in every sector. We need to understand big data, we need to understand the synergies and the interconnection between multidisciplinary skills. So even if we don't have that skill fully ourselves, at least we need to understand it. The speed, the need to connect and to communicate quickly and effectively and to be responsive. And I mean, one thing we're doing within our university, we've long been teaching e-commerce as a foundation and data and algorithms. So although we teach fashion trends and we teach about brands, it's also the backbone of big data. Everything is about, you need data on profit, you need to be sharing that information. You need to understand the backbone of your IT system that you're enabled to share live data. Without live data and without responsive decisions based on data, then, then we're not going to grow and we need to collaborate and we need to have real open minds to who we're working with and be quickly be able to develop a relationship. Your retail professional needs to have first and foremost contextualization of the entire supply chain. 
They need to understand that their role within the delivery of the customer experience isn't necessarily just what's in front of their face, but it includes the deliveries to the store, the deliveries to the customer, the order processing, the procurement, the manufacture, all of those things are part of the supply chain. So individuals in retail for the future need to have a sense of how that contextualizes and what they're dealing with as they're facing the customer and delivering that experience. To make that happen, they need to be data literate. They need to understand that there's a source of information that they can give them new insights and they have to trust that information. And so it really becomes imperative that they're blending the contextualization with the data and that they're using that then to make decisions. A big part of that going forward will fall on the leadership. They need to articulate to individuals about the what, the why, the how of the work that they're doing. And then the individuals need to be comfortable with making a decision based upon a number of choices in front of that. And I think that that's really where the individual will combine with the supply chain and become that custodian, that keeper of the customer experience. And if you can blend that together, it really will be a competitive differentiator. Well, coming from the strategy I, I laid out or the, the, let's say, requirements that are uh, necessary to fulfill, it means also to have a better knowledge of supply chain management. What is supply chain management? And I mean, you know it, all the audience know it, that supply chain management does not mean only one single company, but it means starting from the consumer and going back to the supplier of the supplier. So really the chain, the overall systematic approach, that is something that I'm still missing sometimes when I, when I talk to companies. Mm, that is number one. And the other one is um, to have skills in digitization and technology. That's also something I can see from my own empirical research that um, too many companies have knowledge in some digitization technologies, but not all. And if you want to make a good decision, you should, of course, know all these available technologies. Three things for me um, would be, there's a, there's a fundamental for me, right, right the way back, my first ever management conference I went on, I've never forgotten this, and, and there's a guy there who stood up and he asked a question to the audience. And he said, if you walked into a bakery and, and said to the guy behind the counter or the lady behind the counter, can I have a, can I have a homey loaf? And you walked out with your homey loaf, you paid for it and left. And the question was, what has that retailer sold you? And the simple answer is nothing. You went in for a home you love and you've come out with what you asked for. So fundamentally, retail isn't about just giving you what you want. Retail's about brand aspiration and it's not about anything. If it was a case of all we do is satisfy needs, everybody would have one pair of jeans and one t-shirt. Actually, people aren't like that. You know, the people like, like to buy things. I like to be inspired to buy things. I like the value of a brand. And I don't believe that screens that say people bought this or also bought that are absolutely the way to drive it. Which is why clever online players have, have advocates who support their brand because they're giving you that positive affirmation. If you're a high street facility or a true retailer with, with store locations, those stores have to realise they've got a role to play in that omnichannel journey. So I think it's looking at the assets you've got, it's looking at what is your USP. You know, I regularly went to conferences pre lockdown where people talked about the Amazon effect, and Amazon was this big machine eating of the world. Well, the simple reality is if you try to make yourself Amazon, you're going to fail. Amazon is really good at being Amazon, and credit them, they're very good at it. But you've got a USP that's yours. You need to understand it, drive your teams to understand it and then embrace the change. So fundamentally, it's about innovating, it's about change, it's about creating that culture that people don't see as a threat, but see as a positive. The first one I would say is collaboration. That's the key takeaway. The second one is probably automation. So artificial intelligence, which parts of what you're doing now can be better served, you know, artificially, Connected, so there's parts of data that can be served up more effectively, quicker via computer, and then you decide which ones you take forward. So there's the balance between personal knowledge and gathering enough data by which to make effective decisions. So the first one, collaboration. The second one, automation. And the third one is relationships. So you're going to need to be closer connected to both your consumers and your suppliers than ever before.
that's my three takeaways. Number one, I would say everything's a supply chain, and that's a personal belief of mine. But if you walk into a store and you see inventory on a shelf, you see stacks of garments, you see groceries in a store, everything is part of the supply chain. And the supply chain is what ultimately is responsible for delivering the customer experience. So having that mindset of the connectivity of everything, whether it's physical or digital or it's information or it's financial, there's a supply chain in everything. So being able to understand that is an important part of the retail experience and the supply chain experience as a whole. And then disruption is going to happen. So we talk a lot about resiliency and agility, and it's important that we are able to make the best decision in a given moment. In many cases, it's about preparing to this extent where knowing what those one or two or three options we have when disruption occurs. So being able to put yourself in a position to at least prepare for disruption gives you a chance to make a good decision. And ultimately, that's what supply chain success and retail success is, is being able to make the best decision in the moment over and over again. And then finally, I think there's a willingness to learn. It absolutely has to be an adaptability because we've seen so much change over the last 10 years, the last two years, the last six months, that we have to acknowledge that what we've known in the past won't necessarily make us successful in the future, but it's about how we're continually looking to reinvent the ways that we work. So it's about growing and learning and taking the information as it comes and orienting ourselves, making a decision and then taking action. Well, number one is, know the technologies that is something i mean this is a learning and um it may be a little bit boring but on the other hand as i said if you want to make good decisions you have to know these technologies so have some experts who bring that technology and that know how into your company on the other hand collaborate with your partners that means on both sides of the supply chain um, a stronger collaboration would lead to a better maybe more flexible supply chain maybe more agile uh, supply chain and maybe you can even um, mitigate some of the risks of supply chains um, that is something you, you should keep in mind and the third one is uh, also to maybe work with universities to collaborate when it comes to education um, so that the students and the graduates who come to you have the knowledge you require